The Buntine name is as much a part of the Northern Territory as crocodiles and barramundi. Yet there is no name in the world of heavy cattle haulage in Australia that is likely to stir up as much emotion as that of Noel Buntine. His name is synonymous with hard work, dedication and determination to get the job done. His green and white road trains were a part of everyday life for many outback Australians and were renowned for getting through no matter what the hurdles were. His son Dennis relives some of those early days and tells about the man who created a transport business that stretched from the red desert sands of Central Australia to the tropical rainforests of the north. It was a business that revolutionised cattle transport. Coward started, Coward was coordinated road rail service. Prior to that was the Territory Transport Association and that went back to the start of the 50s and it was an association of all private guys who got together in the early 50s and they pooled their resources and contracted to the Commonwealth Railways. And the initial name was Territory Transport Association, TTA, and then, it, then they formed Coordinated Road, well, that was Coord, we still saw Coordinated Road Rail Service. And this was one of the first trucks this was taken, God knows, 1955, 1959 or the late 50s anyway, and it was uh, Alice Springs to Darwin Perishables in 22 hours and 10 minutes. Single trailer. And uh, those Commonwealth Railway boxes were, uh, they were, uh, you know, dried ice to keep them cool. And she was two drivers and an express run to down. That was in the late 50s. So the fuel on the back, I guess that was for the truck <laughs> to get there. But 244s or 344s on the front of the truck. But anyway, that's when it went on. And uh, towards, in the 60s, Coward combined of uh, uh, my father Noel and um, the O'Neills, the Ryan fleet owners, and Tom Corrie. And in the early 70s, Noel bought out Tom Corry, and there was two there for a while in uh, 74, in the early 70s, when I went, I went to Alice Springs to manage it for him. And there was, there was two partners in there, that was O'Neill's and Noel, and uh, eventually Noel sold out to uh, Colin O'Neill. But th that was the early days in freight. And you know, Noel stayed in the in the business, but he went on to uh, cart cattle. He started carting cattle in 1963 when the meatworks opened in Catherine. And there was always a meatworks opened in Wyndham. There were carriers up here, but uh, I guess it was in, in early days of um, cattle transport. There was a lot of pioneering, pioneering to be done, a lot of roads to be fixed, a lot of beef roads that were upgraded. And... Uh, the advent of stock cartage was such that, um, you know, they looked at self-tracking trailers, they looked at road trains, they looked at all facets of, of, of carting livestock to where we are today. We, we, we graduated from a, a 240 footers, which used to be a two and a half K unit, um, to what we have now is a six deck unit. And, uh, I guess over the years that while well, the prices, the cartage prices haven't gone up so much, but the um, the uh, ability to cart more on a road train has gone up. The same as what I, I guess everyone has with fuel, freight. You know, with two two A plus Bs and so forth, and we 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 continue to held our rates to a minimum, but we've expanded the road train. Dennis, can you explain what the two and a half K means? And Queensland was a prime market in those days and also cattle coming from Queensland to the Northern Territory we used to bring up uh, steers all the time, young young heifers and breeder cattle. So consequently we would pick them up off Queensland Rail at Concurry and they were mainly uh, Brahman cross cattle and they would go into properties on the Barclay Tableland to, I can remember we shipped in thousands and thousands of cattle to places up like Mountain Valley out of Catherine, up near Arnhem Land. 
and that terminology came from Queensland, from the Queensland Rail Wagon, which was a K wagon, 32 feet. So when we ordered, uh, when trailers were being built, you know, in the McGrath days and Hallmark days, well, the standard was, was uh, I guess the early days were 34 feet, and then we went out to 40 feet, and it was a convenience, well, 240 foot is equal to 2.5 K, and that's where we got that from. And 240 footers being 2.5 K, then we, uh, we double them up. So we, we, uh, but that went out over the years, and then we went into the deck, and the deck came from Queensland, I think. Um, 40 foot became a deck. Because, okay, it was too complicated. Well, I mean, we used to cut, uh, I can remember writing out invoices to Wyndham Meats and we would be cutting uh, 70 cents a de uh, sorry, a K kilometre. So, you know, it was, and if you, if you equate that, that was in the late 60s, and if you, if you equate that to those rates, it's not all that much difference. Well, originally, when I first worked for Noel Bunner, and I used to do a, all the uh, trap cattle off the yards out in the bush where they'd trap the wide cat, wild cattle and we'd bring them in and I would go out. Well, usually the trap cattle were the ones that they just couldn't muster on horseback and they used to trap them in a set of yards around a water hole towards the end of the year when all the other waters dried up. They'd have a, they'd put a, a set of wooden yards around there and trap them and they were wild. They'd, they were absolutely mental when by the time you got them in a crate and we used to bring them here to the Catherine Meatworks. We took a lot of fuel, uh, uh, drum fuel, it was all drum fuel in those days into, into remote locations where they were doing a lot of survey work for all the Jabiru, uh, Narbalek, uh, uh, Owen Pelly, all that country through there in the, in the east and Borrelula, MacArthur River too and then we were involved heavily in the Beef Road project which went from Daly Waters to Borrelula and from Heartbreak Hotel down to the, down to the Buckley Homestead, which was all dirt roads in those days, and that was a very big project. It is said that Knoll was instrumental in the development of side loading and invented the through loading system that is used on road trains today. Can you tell us how that came about? I think Knoll was a pioneer in the fact that, I mean, I don't want to take any way, anything away from anyone, but I think. Noel was a pioneer in the fact that he opened country up and in the progress of opening country up, I mean he opened roads up and, and pioneered access to a property to a market and in the meantime he, uh, he, he was a progression of development. How can we do this more efficiently? How can we cart more cattle on one truck? How do we get more horsepower out of one truck? I mean, B models, <coughs> the early B models were, um, you know, 180 horsepower with a P motor engine. And shit, if we could, we, we, we pulled three trailers on. I mean, it was highly illegal. But we, it, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, a thing of how fast you go, it was whether you got there or not. So, I know in a lot of instances, you know, body truck and two trailers are very common units up here. And they were only P motors, they were 180 horsepower. Then we graduated to 7.11s. I think they went up to 230 horsepower. And all the same quad boxes and Mac divs. And likewise, going back to a K wagon, well, uh, a single drive like that with 240 footers was 2.5K. You put a, uh, a a body on the prime mover, turn it into a buggy drive, and that made you three and a half k. According to footage, everything was according to footage. 